You are still on our waiting list, but unfortunately with COVID, everything's had to be pushed back, so we can't offer you a date just yet. University Hospital Coventry is working through a backlog of patients who've been delayed by the COVID pandemic. We are not up to full capacity still with theatres, so we aren't getting through patients obviously as quickly as we would normally, but hopefully in the next couple of months, things will start to pick up again. This is all patients still waiting. It's literally 10 pages long, full of patients. That's one consultant, just one. The Trust has 50,000 people waiting for treatment, 5,000 of whom have been delayed by over a year. We're saying about kind of 12 to 18 months wait, but yeah, it's, it's a long time. It's tough having them conversations, definitely. As a major trauma centre, they admit an average of 121 emergency patients each day, alongside scheduling the growing backlog of surgical patients. To help ease the pressure on critical care, the Trust has decided to put a temporary cap on the number of beds available for some planned operations to just two a day. Does our priority go to cardiac, where we've got, you know, 40 plus patients that are all waiting surgery, that the longer you're waiting to be treated, you're deteriorating slowly? Or do we go to neurosurgery, where they've got patients essentially going blind and losing motor function? Or do we go for thoracics that have got tumours that are growing on their lungs? It's how do you pick the most appropriate? Surgeons from three departments are now vying for just two intensive care beds each day and must work out amongst themselves who takes priority. Due to the pressure continuing in crit care, they are putting a cap on the planned admissions for crit care. They're saying as a group, cardiac, thoracic and neurosurgery, we can only have two patients per day. Two? For all of that? That's Good crazy. Point. It's going to be really difficult to plan this, so what do we do for the next couple of weeks? We've got down planned at the moment uh, cancer. So one of them's cancer, so that'll have to go ahead next sorry, Wednesday. Sorry, it on Wednesdays as well, and I got all the very big cancers who we haven't been doing yeah. over the last three weeks. Sure. And I, I, they cannot wait anymore. They are just okay. last chance. So we'll have to work that out. Tom, would there be any way that you could not have a cardiac case on the 31st to accommodate those two? We have to, don't we? And this is really bad cancers that need doing, they need doing, don't they? Between them, the surgeons have over 130 patients categorised as needing surgery within a month. All our, all our patients have been operated on over the last, I would say, four months. They're all on the cancer category. Well, yeah, mine what, too. What so we we've got to be flexible across the board. I think that sort of hit home by the fact that I got a call from a GP yesterday that a patient on my list has died. Oh, dear. Um, who had a, an eminently treatable revascularization of the heart. And these are important because we can say that these cancers need doing. And of course, if I had cancer, I would definitely not want to be cancelled. But then again, I wouldn't want my GP ringing the hospital to tell them I've died either. So it's a really sort of difficult ethical situation. And for a cardiac surgical specialty, two cases is not enough. Uh, and I know we're in the times we're in, but the, the fact is these cancers are getting prioritised quite rightly, but also we've got to see people are dying. So we've got to have this conversation with the people that are giving these two outs because I don't think we can accept this two for three specialties that are just so reliant on ITU. And that's really sad because they haven't even made it into hospital. I mean, I, yeah. I completely agree with you. Right, thank you all. Thank you. Is the NHS still here for everyone when they need it? There's no doubt that harm's been caused on top of COVID by the decisions that have to be made to cope with COVID. But how much harm have we got by making cardiac patients wait longer or cancer patients wait longer? What is the long-term harm compared to the NHS just crumbling? And so we have to make that balance. Just because you don't die of COVID doesn't mean you're not a COVID death in my mind, because if you then have to wait a long time for your cardiac operation, you die on the waiting list, you won't go down as a COVID death, but Actually, it's COVID that's caused you to die. So we're sort of fighting our little corner from the cardiac patient's perspective to try and sort of redress the balance as much as we can in the confines of what the hospital management are asking us to do.